this time I'd like to call to order the uh, May 5th meeting of the Curry Tuck County Board of Commissioners. 6 p.m. we had a work session discussing water line extensions and connection policy. At this time, lead us in the invocation. We have Reverend Eric Rainwater, Curry Tuck Baptist Bible Church. We have Eric Rainwater. So you know Eric Rainwater. I'll ask we stand, I'll lead us in prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, we thank you for this time together this evening. We pray for your wisdom, your guidance, and that your will be done. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 I would like to, uh, before we say the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to acknowledge that the Supreme Court today, on a five to four vote, acknowledged that uh, local governments have the right to open with an indication, and that cannot be taken away from us. So that's a victory for us. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the agenda, on the consent agenda, we need to delete item four. And we need to add item six, approval of and authorization for county manager to execute a grant agreement with Moyock Volunteer Fire Department for acquisition of air packs. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Commissioner Idlett, a second by Commissioner Gilbert. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have several people signed up for public comment tonight. We have um, a time manager that the county attorney, everyone gets three minutes. I think it's uh, two and a half minutes is green. And then the last 30 seconds is yellow. Is that correct? That's correct. And then red is the end of the three minutes. First person we have signed up to speak tonight is Judy Penny. And ask you when you come up, please state your name and address for the record. Judy Penny, Moyak. I believe that the commissioners, as animal lovers yourselves, would want what any pet lover wants, and that is to return a beloved pet to its rightful and responsible owner. But I am frankly puzzled that the commissioners were so quick to be outraged and to have accepted Dylan Hostetler's story while simultaneously condemning the actions of the animal shelter. Mr. Hostetler has acknowledged that he always let his dog run loose. He could not provide verification that the dog's legally required vaccinations were up to date. Mr. Hostetler alleged that his dog may have been stolen, but because he always let the dog run loose, he cannot say for sure when the dog actually went missing. I suggest that any conclusions regarding Mr. Hostetler's experience with the shelter are premature. It would appear that the shelter acted within its authorized parameters and performed its required due diligence, while Mr. Hostetler did not, in what seems to have been his insufficient and untimely attempts to regain custody of the dog. Importantly, Mr. Hostetler's allegations need to be matched up and compared with the shelter's own details, statements, and records. Years ago, there was a dog that for some time had been roaming my neighborhood in Moyoc. There was no internet, no social media, no Facebook. We tried to find the owner which included things like driving around different places with the dog to see if anyone recognized it, putting up a photo at what was then Eagle Market in Moyoc, and of course contacting animal control. The dog was wearing a collar but had no tag or ID. It was a male with fleas and ticks who was skinny, hungry, not neutered, and turned out to have heartworms. We did eventually hear from the owner, a young man who lived with his mother in Ranchland, which is more than several miles away. The dog was four years old, and, as in the case here, he got the dog when it was a puppy. He decided to sue us, and we were involved with the lawsuit and the court for quite a while. He claimed he tried hard to find the dog, and he wanted everyone to believe his version of events, that he was being wrongly deprived of his dog, and he just wanted his dog back. It turned out that much of what he said before the lawsuit changed significantly when he was under oath. We learned that it was not unusual for the dog to be missing, sometimes for a few days and sometimes for more than a week. The owner admitted that he had always let the dog run loose. The dog was not current on any of its health care and vaccinations. We wanted to keep the dog. 
We believed the young man had neglected the dog. The court agreed. According to the April 23rd article in the Daily Advance, the county attorney has indicated that Mr. Hostetler's recourse may be small claims court. I would say that if Mr. Hostetler is then unable to produce appropriate ownership and current vet and vaccine rec vaccination records, he might not be surprised that the court may rule against him. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Penny. Next is Richard Labounty. My name is Richard Labounty. I live at a 214 Beachwood Shores Drive in Moyoc. Um, I serve as the president of Moyoc Volunteer Fire Department. I also serve on the FIAB board. I'm here because I support Teresa Wheeler. Um, she served this county a long time. And while I am not privy to the details of why she's no longer with us, I am privy to other information that there is a problem in the EMS system at this time. I have been approached by close to 30 employees and asked to bring out their message. And their message is that they feel like they are being bullied in, in the EMS system. Um, I can't help but wonder if Teresa is also a victim of this same bullying that's going on in this system. Like I said, I don't have the details, so I don't know that to be a fact, and I know that's a personnel issue. Um, it troubles me that someone that has been with this system, volunteering, teaching, taught, probably close to 90% of the techs that have gone through this county over the last 30 years, and now we decide that she's no longer worthy of working for Curry Tech County. She dedicates her time, she volunteers, she has taught volunteers, she has serves on the current, uh, on Moyoc, um Board of Directors currently. Um, I don't know what we can do, but I think we need to do something to show Miss Wheeler, who's had a very troublesome year, some leniency here, and whatever she did wrong, and stop the bullying, and stop how these employees feel in this county right now. I worked in this county for 10 years. I felt the same way. When they approached me, they approached me because they know I will stand strong with them. They know I will protect them to the end and that I will keep their information until they feel it's time for them to be known private. I did receive close to 20, 27, 28 letters from these employees, um, which is more than half of the employees, or right at half of the employees for Curry Tuck right now, I believe there are 76 full-time employees. Um, some were part-time, and I believe two were former employees. Um, when they approached me on this matter, my life was way too busy to be involved with this, and it took me two weeks to decide to get involved. Two weeks of debating whether or not I should be involved with it. Um, after much time and much deliberation, I told him, I can't let this go. I, I'm there for you. Whatever you need me to do, you tell me. So most of the information that has come out in the last couple of weeks from them has been through me, but only on their behalf. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is... Next is Sybil O'Neill. Good evening. My name is Sybil O'Neill. I'm from Maple, North Carolina. Many citizens have gathered this evening to express our concern for a Curry Tech County employee being fired for reasons that are not clear to us. If one is fired for using the copy machine for personal reasons, I suggest you investigate every employee of the county. I'm sure there will not be many left. And if this is a valid reason for being fired, uh, for firing someone, then there will be a lot of them be fired. If the documents we have seen are true and correct, this employee was fired for reasons that are not valid and are not correct. I've had the opportunity to talk to many people that complained of harassment and bullying from Mr. Glover. They have no voice. They're scared. They fear for their job or being demoted. They are depending on the community to help them, so here we are to speak for them. No one should have that kind of fear. In fact, this man is causing this kind of fear in people. I ask that his employment be ter terminated immediately. This is not acceptable. As you all know, Teresa Wheeler has been replaced by a person who is not qualified for this position, but now someone wants this job qualification description to be changed to accommodate 
his employment. This is wrong. You know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. And the people know it's wrong. Ms. Wheeler is a lifetime resident of this county, given several years of volunteer time to this community before she became a full-time employee. Documents show that for each time she was accused for being late for work, coming back late from lunch, that she indeed was working. This was another tactic used to have her terminated with unjust cause. We ask that this matter be taken most seriously and investigated. Let none of us forget that we, the people, or your employer, we pay your salary. Without us, you would not exist. Thank you. Will Crotic. Good evening. Uh, my name is Will Crotic. I live at 182. Bromley Road, Knott's Island, North Carolina. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to make it the last meeting. Had some unpleasant things uh, pop up. But I would like to respond um, to some comments that were made after I made my public comments. And particularly um, involving the fact that I'm a candidate, which I never mentioned, never ever in this forum. And I just want to tell you that the, the things I'm talking about, they're, they're not political issues. The things I'm talking about are issues for everybody in this county. And I've been talking about them before I was a candidate, and I'll be talking about them after I'm either elected or not. And I'm not taking my hat off, you know, as a citizen to talk in, in, in front of any board I want to talk about. But anyhow, so that being said, I would like to talk about some things that I think that you could help with. And I'd like to tell you about that um, <clears throat> out of the North Carolina District 1 funding for schools, there's six counties. And when we're talking about the state, and the local, and the federal funding, Kurtuck County, per pupil, ranks number five, number five out of six in this district. Okay, so that's the first thing. And what I'd like you guys to seriously consider is this 14-year-old model that we use in this county to provide the local funding, which is how you derive how much you're going to appropriate to the local school out of the local taxpayer's money. It's a 14-year-old model. We're using average daily membership, okay? Average daily membership, meaning how many students are enrolled that year. It's not even have anything to do with the funding that's required by the state. Average daily membership's got nothing to do with it. Capital outlay and building maintenance, as I understand, are what the requirement is. Not to suggest that the money that they're paying wouldn't somehow uh, be above that. What I am saying is, is that if we're number six in the district, and we don't have a teacher in every class, we are not doing the best we can do. We can do better. And I'm saying we should seriously consider that upon making your budget, reviewing this model for how you elect to, to uh, appropriate local funds to the school board. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dawn Eskins. Yeah, he's trying to cut it off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dawn Eskins. I live in Camden, North Carolina. Um, I want to share a story with you guys, and I would challenge any one of you who've ever dialed 911 to listen up. 2004, my three children left home to go to school. They were pulling out of the neighborhood in Bartlett's Landing, and they were um, hit by a, uh, a gentleman who had had several accidents in the past couple of months. My children's car flipped. It ended up upside down in a ditch. I had kids with blood everywhere. I had 
broken bones, all kinds of horrific things. No parent is, I was one of the first ones that was called out there. And I want to describe the situation so that you guys can understand who you have fired, okay? Um, there was building going on nearby. Contractors ran out to help. There were neighbors that ran out to help. Every one of them that came there was honestly doing the best they could to help my children. It was not until the professionals got there that things were, were done, that they were handled. Nightingale was called. Ambulances were called. My children, all three, are beautiful and perfect and healthy. But what would have happened if they hadn't been treated by trained professionals? Okay? The woman that you guys, not you guys, the woman that has been fired served this county for 36 years. And I guarantee you not one phone call has been made to 911 that her, that she didn't affect somehow. I request that a formal apology be given to her and who was responsible for her dismissal be fired. Um, I'm not sure there's much more than you can say to that. When someone has a bad year, when someone loses their husband, when things happen and they're peers reach out and volunteer their vacation time. You know, you all have heard the stories of what's been going on here. If I volunteered my vacation time to someone, that says volumes what I think about them. So how would I feel if my vacation time was then rejected for someone that I cared so much about? So that was round one. What you guys are seeing now is a witch hunt, and it's not round one, it's round two or three of this. She's been treated very unfairly, and I believe she deserves an apology and reinstatement. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ginger Sykes. I'm Ginger Sykes. I live at 111 Mallard Drive in Currituck, and I like to read from you from the annual inspection of the Curry Tuck Animal Shelter that was done by State Inspector Lisa Carlson. Entering the facility, I noticed it to be odor free, very clean and organized. This older facility is very well maintained and all animals on the premises appear happy, healthy, and injury free. I am, again, made aware of all the care and compassion that goes into the welfare of every animal that is sheltered here. This is reflected over and over again with not only the state of cleanliness of the shelter, but in the care put forth." End quote. The matter regarding Dylan Hostetler and his dog has been resolved uh, to the satisfaction of Mr. Hostetler and our shelter. One of the things that we are going to do as a result of this uh, is update an educational flyer that we have had in the past and we have not updated recently, but just so you can get an idea, it's called Common Sense Pet Care Suggestions. Many people care about their animals, care dearly, members of the family. Uh, in fact, one of the largest uh, segments of growth in this country, even during the depressed times that we have been through in the last several years, have been in pet items and pet purchases for, or purchases for pets. And so we think that some of the situations that uh, occurred with, with Mr. Hosteller were due to his not being aware that you can microchip an animal for $15, say, at our shelter. Uh, you can take an animal and have it vaccinated free of charge in this county or in Pasquotank for rabies. There are two free rabies clinics every single year. And we think that we need to do perhaps a little better job in communicating to the public some of the options that are available that don't cost a fortune. But for example, we're going right now into high mosquito season. And in doing that, you need to make sure that your animal is protected with heartworm prevention before we get into that. And it needs to see a vet to be tested if he's been off of that. And so those are the kinds of things that we need to do perhaps a better job of making the public aware of. When, with the limited space in our shelter, in order to meet state requirements when we are full, we sometimes have to ask for the help of rescues. 
uh, in getting an animal out of the shelter so that we can save its life after the county uh, five-day uh, reclaim period has done. And that's what we did in this case. We talked with another shelter because we were at the end of the eighth day. And at that time, we had very few options. We were overcrowded according to state regulations. We followed every single law to the letter and plus did a good job, I think, of saving the lives of animals that were in our care by getting them into a rescue. We thank you for your, your help with our shelter, too. Thank you. Next, I believe, is Sean, but I don't want to mispronounce the last name, or maybe I'm mispronouncing all of it. 244 Griggs Acres. Is that okay? Going to skip that one. And next we have Janet Rose. Oh, okay, Sharon. Yes. Okay, I got it now. Good evening. I'm Sharon Martz, 244 Griggs Acres Road, Point Harbor. I'm coming here this evening pleading before the board for the reinstatement of Teresa Wheeler. Firing anyone within a month of full retirement seems cruel to me, but the firing of Teresa Wheeler, who's not only close to full retirement, but has also endured watching her husband suffer terminal illness and then death, seems beyond cruelty to me. The Bible calls us to care for the widows and the orphans, while Teresa has never needed nor asked for help because uh, she could always provide for herself. That is until now. But now the county has felt justified in taking away her source of independence and providing for her basic needs. And it seems to me that this was done without much thought at all. I ask you commissioners, where is there any mercy and justice for this? Is there any that you can justify any way to justify this. I have a revolting and sickening and repulsive feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I would be shocked if you didn't too, because this is a repulsive situation. I am here, as others are, to ask for reinstatement of Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Already knows Janet Rose. Good evening. My name is Janet Rose, 212 Pointers Road, Moyonk. I'm here to ask for your support for Teresa Wheeler. I have to say I was appalled over the weekend when I heard that she was fired after giving 28 almost 29 years to Air County. I've known Teresa since high school. There's not a finer citizen in this county. Curry Tuck is fortunate to have many wonderful employees. Mr. Ben Woody sitting right over here, wonderful. Lots of good employees. They go above and beyond the call of duty. They work for Air County. They love Air County. Teresa is one of these folks. I'm not sure what the grievance process here is for the county. I know what it is for the school system. We are allowed to do process, and we are allowed a hearing. If we don't have that in place for county employees, I ask that you get that in place. I would like to see a board made up of you commissioners. When, when employees feel that they've been done wrong, they need to be able, you need to be able to hear their story, and you need to be a part of that decision. Please reinstate Teresa. Thank you. That's the last person we had signed up. I will say this. The um, county commissioners are not allowed to speak about a personnel issue, which most of you know that. Uh, we are aware of the issue. We have heard you tonight. And I can tell you that uh, the Board of Commissioners are not going to tolerate any inappropriate behavior towards any employees. And that's, I'll leave it with that. 
and we'll move on to the next agenda item unless someone has something just to, to just to address Janet so the county I mean there is a process in place just as it is in the school system I mean that's, that was one of the things so, yeah. involving commissioners did mm -hmm. you sit on the hearing not involving us but a, a grievance process in place as it is in the school system does it in the school system does it involve the, the we principal? are entitled to due process and we can request a hearing before members of the board of education can you? Mm -hmm. okay thank you um first public hearing item a is public hearing in action consideration of the corolla village circulation and wayfinding plan uh i believe we have miss holly white Good evening. Do you guys have copies of the plan? We do, do not. Need, do you need a copy? I've seen for it discussion? Like three or four Anybody times. Anybody like one? I'll just, just give. Actually, one. There, there's a copy in your agenda package. It yeah. is. Yeah, we have one. <coughs> How about just taking your time because some folks are okay. leaving. Does anybody like a paper copy? The clicker's broken in. Um, before you tonight for consideration is the Corolla Village Circulation and Wayfinding Plan. Um, this plan was a result of uh, an action item that was listed in our Corolla Village Small Area Plan. And um, the Corolla Village Small Area Plan was done with community input. One of the key things that the community identified was um, the traffic congestion, um, so the conflict between cars, um, people, and bikes and that that created a problem for people moving uh, to and from all the destinations in the village area as well as the sound and the beach and that um, that detracted from the kind of the small village feel that existed and that was something important that the community wanted to preserve um, so this crawl village circulation and wayfinding um, plan was initiated last summer and through the input of the community, and that would uh, we met with business owners, um, citizens, the Corolla Civic Association, uh, and even the tourists. We set up a booth at um, the Wellhead Art Festival Day, and got input from the community about how do how do we resolve these issues. And we kind of vetted the recommendations of the plan through the community. Um, the logo that you see on the sign is. Uh, part of the recommendation. We wanted to brand a logo f specifically for Corolla Village to be able to market um, the village uh, as a separate entity uh, just due to the amount of um, unique destinations, have so many cultural and historic destinations in this area, probably more so than other areas of the Outer Banks um, with the Wellhead Club, Heritage Park, the Lighthouse, um, the Wildlife Education Center, and then the businesses and historic locations within Corolla Village itself. Um, the main goal of the circulation and wayfinding plan overall was to improve circulation and safety um, for bikes and peds. And um, so the plan addresses that through ro roadway improvements, signage and wayfinding, improved amenities, um, and economic opportunities to uh, diver diversify our tourists, our, vi our type of visitor that's um, coming to the area, as well as um, some programming and marketing for the area. So we're bringing, bringing people here and we're going to direct them uh, through some wayfinding about how to get to our destinations and to our businesses. Uh, on the screen you see a, um, a map of the village and this is our mapped out recommendations um, that are located in the plan. One of the cool things that they did in the study was to show just how closely all of our destinations are, are in um, the village. Um, if they overlaid a Mall of America footprint 
on the Corolla Village area. And so everything is within the walking distance of what you would walk in a, a typical mall. Um, and also they did the South Point Mall in Durham, for those of you who are familiar with that. So everything's within about a 10-minute ten ten um, walking distance of one another. Um, there are recommendations in here that are uh, in Wellhead and Heritage Park. Um, we did partner or, or work with closely with Wellhead and the study that they were doing for recommendations to um, make improvements um, to the site, like the site master plan. And some of this, the findings of our uh, plan are consistent with those that were found in the, uh, the Wellhead study as well. Um, again, we're looking at doing some wayfinding. Um, that's just to direct people. Um, there's important destinations here. It's a five-minute walk. It's a two-minute walk to this destination. Um, circulation, we're looking at paths, different types of path improvements. Safety, and that would include um, crosswalks, like a raised tabletop to slow traffic, um, and different types of amenities, parking areas, um, bathrooms, and marketing tools. Um, people really want a map outlining um, the destinations and um, the paths and how to get to and from destinations. They're asking for that piece of information. The, the visitors are. Okay, Ben. Um, one of the pieces of, of low-hanging fruit was to develop um, a, a master kind of wayfinding signage system, and that included our branded logo. And it, it, the signage that you see on the screen is not only pe um, pedestrian signage, you see the guy on the left, so it's showing you that's a pedestrian level sign, but it's also a vehicular signage. So we've created a branded, um, consistent type of signage um, to direct people in the village area. Um, the next um, improvement, this is just going through some of the screens of, of what I've mentioned earlier. The, this is what uh, the raised crosswalk might look like. And we're looking at doing those along everywhere you see a little red um, red dot down. Ben, can you please highlight um, the on the map the Highway 12 locations? Yeah. All those areas in red um, are those that we would look at um, be doing like a stamped crosswalk of some kind to um, bring awareness that there's pedestrian crossing here. And um, that might look like in this next screen. Um, this is an actual photograph of the entrance to the Wellhead Club. One of the recommendations is to come in and remove the center section of the turn lane and turn that into a vegetated median, create a, um, a, a crosswalk in that area for to bring slow traffic and uh, bring awareness that you've arrived um, to a special location and place, making it safer for pedestrians and, and bikes to cross in this area. Uh, the next uh, recommendation we're going to kind of look at tonight is uh, a one-way. Um, we're looking at uh, turning Corolla Village Road on the west side of Highway 12 into a one-way um, street, and that would be coming off of Highway 12, making a left towards the sound um, between Heritage Park and the Lighthouse, um, and the circulation would run west, and then north down Corolla Village Road one-way um, and end it. Persimmon. Both um, Persimmon Street and Schoolhouse Lane would remain two-way. Um, and the next picture will show you kind of what that might um, look like. Now, in the plan, it breaks it out into several different phases. All this wouldn't have to be done at once. Um, the striping itself could be done initially. Um, I think in the plan, it's, it's around $8,000 to just go in and paint the road. But the whole point of this is to separate users. So you're providing a place for cars. You're providing a place for um, bikes, bikes and uh, a place for pedestrians all separated to keep, um, direct them and keep them safe. Um, next recommendation um, we're going to take a look at is the east side of Corolla Village Road and that would be from Highway 12 all the way to the ocean. Um, we are currently in the process of um, constructing a public access facility and um, we're actually a little ahead of the plan so uh, one of our staff members is already working on, on that, but um, tying into that project that we're already working on is some type of boardwalk system. And um, in this Corral Village area, we have Highway 12 and a board um, multi-use path that runs north-south along Highway 12, but the study found that there is um, an important connection that runs east-west, creating another backbone in the village um, as far as moving people and that um, in very few places in the Outer Banks as a whole do we have um, 
places or opportunities for people to walk from the sound to the ocean in one location and we want to capitalize on that. So we'd be looking at adding a boardwalk um, in this area along the east side of Corolla Village Road. This is just a picture of what that might look like. Yes, that was um, one of the other key things that we heard back through this plan and um, the Connecting Corral plan we did was the need for ADA accessibility. And um, this boardwalk, as well as the public access facility that's being um, under design now, is uh, ADA accessible. Uh, this is just a map again showing kind of the summary of all the recommendations in the plan. Um, I'm going to briefly review with you kind of uh, the most important piece for you guys probably, which is um, the budget breakdown and how this works into our, how we're going to fund all this stuff. Um, so we had our, our consultant that we were working with, Alta, to break out our projects into um, this first phase, so low cost and high impact projects and high cost and higher impact projects. Um, and so these are just a, a starting point for us that we can go in and, and pick which way we want to approach accomplishing these, um, these projects. So in addition to having them break out this way, um, we also, um, thank you Ben, um, had them break out projects into under $50,000 and over $50,000. Um, that way hopefully our individual departments could carry some of the smaller under $50,000 projects and our larger projects maybe um, could be managed by our engineer or out of the county manager's office. Um, just to kind of review a few of those um, with you, the WH1 through 1345 and 6 projects that you see there are all located in Wellhead and they have to do with the entrance and reconfiguring the entrance to make it um, uh, look less like a subdivision entrance and more like a um, public facility entrance, public park entrance. Um, the next section you see are nodes, and uh, nodes are just um, locations, key locations, where you're going to have high traffic um, bike and ped, um, high traffic volumes of bike and ped that you would need directional or wayfinding signage, and maybe even a resting point. So these areas are, are envisioned to be, uh, maybe I have a bench, um, have a sign showing people you are here and these are the destinations around you and, and this is how far you are from those destinations. Um, the pedestrian safety elements um, again would include uh, crosswalks and um, <clears throat> there's a village um, bicycle boulevard that's on there that is the one-way striping that you saw the picture of a little earlier. So these are the kind of the low-hanging fruit that's under 50,000. Um, and this would be phase one, uh, phase, the over 50,000 phase one recommendations um, would be the tabletop entrance to Wellhead, um, as well as a boardwalk um, on the west side of Highway 12, and that, that um, excuse me, on the west side of Corolla Village Road, and you saw that in that picture of the um, one-way street. So th they've broken out individual pieces um, to make it uh, easier to implement it and more that we, yes, yes sir. You were on public safety a moment ago. Mm -hmm. There seems to be some concern about how this will affect the multi-use path that's proposed to start off from Food Line to Harris Teeter. This in no way will affect slowdown or whatever that path. I think that's at um, the board and the manager's discretion as far as funding because I think what we're hearing that multi-use path and I think you've heard it is priority one uh, from food line to Harris Teeter it, it is a priority of the um, Corolla Civic Association mm -hmm. um, it has been made a priority in the budget that I'm about to start discussing with the board here soon um, but it, we're not holding at bay every other project until that project is absolutely completed. I, I think it's, we have the ability, the capability of doing things concurrently. So although we will continue to, to, to work on the multi-use path, some of these projects will be looked at to, to possibly fund it also. 
Well, in addition to, but one of my question is, is, are you saying that it's possible that, that this could leapfrog over that? I think they can be done concurrently. Answer my question. Thank you. That's part of why we had the consultant break out the under under fifty thousand dollar projects and over fifty thousand, so that we were able to do some of the smaller projects concurrently. Okay. These are um, phase two projects that are under fifty thousand. It's just um, more more of the same. I think the one um, to bring your attention to in this photo is. Um, uh, PS four, five, and six. So that's pedestrian safety, um, and that would just be uh, taking out the cr uh, center turn lane in front of Heritage Park and turn it into a vegetated median. Um, next slide. Thank you. Uh, this is phase two, uh, over fifty thousand dollar projects. Um, the probably the biggest project to bring your attention to in this slide is the uh, docking facilities at Wellhead Club. This. Um, this is a finding that was consistent with the Wellhead study as well as um, our study. And uh, lastly, the biggest one to highlight in here uh, in this slide, which is phase three, uh, over 50,000 would be um, the Soundside boardwalk system. And um, the study as a whole um, determined that we needed to make better access of our sound front, better utilize that, um, and bring people to that since it's such a uh, a great resource that we we do have. Um, I will add that you know some of the projects are consistent with things that were brought forward with Wellhead. There are opportunities for us to work jointly with them to implement these these projects together and bring them forward together. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Want to have questions of Ms. White? Done a wonderful job, you and the rest of the staff putting it together. Yeah, comments. I, I, yeah. Yeah, just same. That's all I was going to say too. Y'all done a wonderful, wonderful job. Looks nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, sir. I had one question. It's not. It's not for you. I don't believe. Uh, probably more appropriately directed to the uh, county manager. The funding for these projects will. Uh, well, tell us where the funding will come from. It, it, it will not be coming from. Ad valorem tax, is that correct? It, it will not be coming from property tax. Uh, it'll be a combination of occupancy tax, um, state grants, federal grants, um, in anywhere we can leverage what we can do with occupancy tax. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. uh, this time I'm going to open the public hearing. We have no one signed up. Is there anyone that wishes to speak that didn't sign up? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I will move to approve. A motion from Commissioner Idlett. Second. Second that motion. Second from Commissioner Gilbert. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Next agenda item is new business, board appointments. We have appointments to the fire and EMS board. I believe... Did, did John Brennan take George Bergamini's place? Whatever they recommended, is that was a fire appointment, I believe, right? Okay. Did we already do that, or is that for tonight? For tonight, I think. In okay. And then Mr. Petrie has a, an appointment for Charles Berry. What are the criteria to be on this board? And what are, I'm being told that you can't, be an active volunteer firefighter or EMS and be on the board. That's right. That's correct. Well, a paid employee, yeah. I believe. Is it not? It's a paid employee. Right. You can but be a you, volunteer, yeah. You can be a volunteer. But not a paid employee. Okay. That, that was my question. Can I postpone my appointment, please? You can. Because I didn't understand that. Why? That's volunteer fine. firefighter knows a lot more than I do. I, I, I couldn't pick anyone. You, so. you, can, you, can you can call... Uh, Stanley Griggs, and, and he's the chairman. He can tell you, but I believe I'm right in what I told okay, you. Okay, I think he's not on the. I think he's. Well, he, Ernie, yeah. um, I mean, Mr. Griggs is to be replaced. He served his two terms. He is, yes. Yeah, right. And I'm going to appoint Ernie Bray from Shawboro. So we have John Brennan from the fire department and Ernie Bray as a citizen appointment. 
Did, oh. Ms. Mary, did I, Mr. Kaysen have already done him? Uh, so I need to do him too. Yeah. I'm reappointing uh, Jimmy Kaysen or Okay, and then Chairman, I'll reappoint Evelyn Henley as my appointment to the Fire EMS Advisory Board. Okay, and we don't have a recommendation on Mr. LeBounty tonight from the fire department, do we? Is he due? That's what it says. Sure. It? Okay. He he filled out Mr. Wheeler's term. Okay, so we'll wait till next meeting to take care of that. Okay, so we have Evelyn, Evelyn Henley, Jim Kaysen, John Brennan from the fire department, and Ernie Bray from my appointment. Any further discussion? All those in favor of these appointments, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is consent agenda. Move for approval. I have a motion for approval from Commissioner Gilbert. Second. Second from Commissioner Martin. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Commissioner's report, Mr. McCord. I want to flip to my notes here. Just had a couple things. Um, first off, I'd like to um, recognize a high school senior. I have two seniors graduating this year in my household. Um, it's broke the bank on yearbooks, cap and gowns, all that good stuff, proms, class rings. Uh, Haley Swinney, she lives on Bells Island Road, nice kid, plays a lot of sports, um, really good kid. She uh, put together a petition, uh, which a lot of people, um, she had a ton of signatures, and they uh, approved. Graduation is going to be outside. Uh, if it would have been inside, that would just allow two tickets per child. Um, like I said, in my situation, I have two sons that are 18 that are both graduating. So I'm very proud that she did what she did. And the schools, I'm also very proud that they were very helpful with her and having that outside. Um, I missed the work session at 6 tonight. One of my children uh, was in regionals uh, for Curry Tuck. Uh, they won the regionals. It was in Snow Hill right outside of Greenville today. Um, I think they beat 14 schools. Uh, Hall Rupert, uh, father owns businesses in Curry Tuck County. Gunnel Rupert, uh, he was the medalist of the tournament. He won in a playoff. Uh, it was a pretty big thing because there was uh, probably a hundred, probably a hundred golfers, and uh, he was in a three-way tie. Um, so, like I said, just like to recognize him as well. That's two seniors, at Curry Tuck High School. Um, tomorrow, election day. Make sure everybody votes. If you didn't early vote, it's also my birthday, so don't send cards and flowers and all that stuff. But but no, it's just a joke. But yeah, make sure you vote, everybody. You know, like I said, if you um, if you don't cast your vote, you know, you can't technically kind of complain. But you know, like I said, just make sure you vote. Tomorrow's election day. Hold the birthday cards and the gifts for me. But that's it for tonight. Mr. Griggs, I've got two things. But one, I'd like to make a comment to uh, Commissioner McCord. The uh, yearbook. I also have a son who's a graduating senior at Curry Tuck County High School. And I can assure you, the yearbook and class ring expenditures dwarfed in comparison with the college tuition bill that I just received. <laughs> <laughs> but one minor softening blow and uh, bear with me on, on this, the proud father. My, my son did receive the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation Foundation scholarship for this year, so that'll help a little bit. But now getting into business, uh, Don Cheek, who's the manager of the Corolla Light Resorts, whom incidentally did not want me to do this, uh, but I'm going to bring it out that he recently contributed an eight-passenger golf cart that they use for trolley services to the Wellhead Preservation Trust to help them out. So I'd like to commend him and Corolla Light, uh, Lights Resorts for that. Two, I'm contemplating kind of starting a little tradition here. I don't know. I'll call it a Griggsism or whatever. Is uh, it'll probably entertain a few and irritate more, but it's not being done to irritate anybody, but maybe to provoke some thought. Hopefully most of it will be uh, consistent with our lives and where we find ourselves. 
But I think the first one that I'm going to do is point out that in a recent uh, Washington Times article, it indicated that food stamps, officially known as the Supplemental Nutrition Program, has increased by 70 percent in the years since this present, uh, present administration has been in office. According to the Wall Street Journal, a record 47.8 million people participate in this program as of December 2012. This is a 70 percent rise since 2008. Now, that's just a precursor to the Griggsism. Have you ever wondered why we frequently hear that Social Security is in trouble and may face reduction in the amount paid to people in the future? But I don't believe we ever hear of any impending cuts in welfare or food stamps. I would just ponder that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Mr. Martin? <clears throat> Only to uh, say uh, I'll see you at the polls tomorrow. Mr. Idlett? I don't have anything. I would, it's a little different. I'd like to ask Mr. Craddock to clarify. He, when he said we were number six out of six, is that <coughs> being funding the best or the least? I said we're fifth out of six, meaning we're fifth number one would be the best out of the six surrounding counties in <clears throat> district one yes sir so, so what you're funding per pupil what you're telling me is out of six counties we we're rated number we're ranked number five in six counties in our area yes sir correct that is exactly out, what of, I'm telling you. out of the combined federal state, state and local oh, funding. oh okay the big picture oh it is a big picture <clears throat> okay oh, all right children, okay. Big pictures, and that's what i'm trying thank to you that's understand. you don't yes, need sir. that's you, I don't, that's all i need to know but from the county perspective from what we fund <clears throat> we are i would venture to say number one uh except for what you're uh failing to understand is all the other benefits that come in from the state and federal for other programs that offset that. So I didn't say low. state and federal, Mr. Craddock. I said from a county perspective, that's what I said, county, Currituck County, when it comes to funding our school systems, uh, I, I would venture we're probably number one out of those six. That was my statement. Exactly that, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I would also comment that on a statewide level, Currituck consistently ranks in the top 15 of local dollars uh, yeah. out of 100, and is it 21 school systems or 117? Yeah. used to be about 117. Yeah. There's about 117, 19 school systems. Curry Tuck consistently ranks in local dollars, in which is team. what the taxpayers in this county pay okay. and the tops in the state and have been for years. Go ahead, Mr. Petri. I don't, I wasn't going to say anything, but now that we're talking about education, I know that the school board funds completely on their own 23 additional teachers. Currituck County Schools that are not paid for by federal government or state government. They fund those 23 teachers themselves. Ms. Gilbert? A couple things. Um, on May 11th, it's Mother's Day, so I want to go ahead and wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. And with that, the Mayock Women's Club is having their annual mother-daughter tea on Saturday. May 10th from 1130 until 2 at the um, Providence Baptist Church. So any of you that have not RSVP'd or gotten your tickets, you can see me. You can talk to Amy Ennis or Joanna Brumsey um, and, and come and have a great day. We've got some wonderful entertainment from the high school choir, um, Rebecca Marla, Marla, and we also have a pianist coming to play to entertain. So that's one thing. And then um, make sure you mark your calendars. May 17th, we have a Career Talk Kids fundraiser. Looking forward to that, so just mark your calendar and I'll, I'll present more information on in our next meeting on that. Um, I, too, like Paul and uh, Butch, we'll see you at the polls tomorrow. And look for your support. I guess it's my turn. I have two things. Um, I guess I'm going to talk about county business. Um, land use update. We've been talking about the land use update, and it's time to start doing an update on the land use plan. Um, we have different areas in the county that have, have we've done one at Maple, we've done one in Corolla, we've done one in Moyoc, and 
when are we I'm not asking you tonight to give me dates but when are we going to start looking at the rest of the county for the update to the land use plan um, that that will be the next long-range planning project that the staff undertakes and I'll also note that in this year's budget request um, we've also requested a minor amount of funds to help get that started so we're gearing up to, to initiate that process so you'd be prepared to kind of give us some dates going you know kind of months or when I can I can work not with the tonight yeah but I can work with the manager in the next couple of weeks to come up with maybe a tentative schedule because that was last done I believe it started in 2004 or five and it was adopted in six so it's time 2006 to yeah. start the process again the other thing is is I want to talk about oh, well I want to ask the manager I've had uh, several people uh, discuss with me about the uh, uh, proliferation of coyotes in the county and uh, some time back I guess it's been a couple years ago we had a gentleman from the Wildlife Resources Commission came and let the citizens know what they could do about coyotes and I know you're trying to schedule him and do you have a time for him to come yet no, we do not have anything scheduled yet but you're working on it yes sir okay because I I thought that we would have somebody at the last meeting and I had told I know you were trying to get him to come and I told some people I thought he would be here at the last meeting and he wasn't here so I figured I better uh, uh, let them know that I didn't purposely fib to him yeah there's a lot of them okay and th that's all I have and we'll go to the county manager's report uh, I have nothing tonight thank you with that uh, we need to go into a closed session pursuant to NC general statutes 143-318.11 a3 to consult with the county attorney in order to preserve the attorney client privilege and to receive advice from the county attorney regarding the potential settlement of a tax valuation issue pending before the North Carolina Property Tax Commission entitled Appeal of Coastland Corporation. Do we have a motion? So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Gilbert, a second from Commissioner Petrie. All those in favor, aye. Aye.